How's it going guys? My name is Arthur and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through some finance interview questions. This is particularly relevant if you're interested in the types of questions that you might receive in an investment banking interview, maybe an analyst role at a private equity firm or an entry level asset management role. These questions are really just testing you if you have a base level knowledge and if you have been interested enough in the role to dig a little bit deeper and try and understand baseline ideas and concepts. Quick disclaimer, I did not come up with these questions myself. Most of these I sourced online through different types of forums such as Wall Street Oasis you guys are also the first people that will be checking my answers. So please let me know if you think I made a mistake or you got a slightly different result. I'm very interested to hear your thought process. All right, so let's begin with question one, uh, which comes from Lazard and Investment Bank. So this type of question you could probably get if you're going for that investment banking role, probably at an analyst level. So here we have, uh, what is the fully diluted shares outstanding at a given stock price given 10 in the money or ITM options contracts, uh, an equity value of 100 million and 2,500 shares currently outstanding. So the key thing that we're looking for here is the fully diluted shares outstanding number. Firstly, uh, what's important for us to define is if you're saying that you have 10 in the money options contracts, one option contract basically results in 100 shares. So uh, total shares, total we'll call it option shares will be 10 times 100. So we're looking at an additional 1000 shares that can be exercised uh, as they are in the money. And we're looking at an already outstanding 2500 shares. Now, this is the trick here. The actual question that we're trying to answer here seems to be the fully diluted shares outstanding, but not the share price of fully diluted shares outstanding. Uh, and I think that's really the trick in this question. So the final answer is very simple. We don't even have to use the equity value of 100 million to calculate the current share price. We actually know that the answer then is the fully diluted shares outstanding. We actually know that the fully diluted shares outstanding is then 1000 plus 2500, which is equal to 3,500 fully diluted shares outstanding. And that is our answer right here. So actually a very simple question, but if you overthink it, you try to use the additional information that was provided, we're probably gonna end up with the incorrect answer. All right, moving on to our second problem here. So this one here is from Evercore, also an investment bank. I think this is the type of question that you're probably going to get if you're going into an investment banking analyst role. Uh, something like this could also be at an analyst role at a PE firm. Uh, the reason I say that is because this is a PE problem and it involves a leverage buyout, which is the typical method a private equity firm would acquire a company. So here we have uh, a PE firm LBO to target in December 2015, at the end of December 2015. They bought the company at 5x, trailing 12 months EBITDA. And then it tells us that the 2015 EBITDA was 20, let's say million. The firm went with a 60-40 debt to equity ratio. This here is important. And then we know uh, now they're exiting in December uh, 31, 2020. 2020 EBITDA was 40 million at the same 5X EBITDA multiple uh, for the exit uh, valuation. So the PE firm paid down $20 million of total debt using the free cash flow uh, over the five years. So this is referring to the company being able to pay down uh, the debt using uh, the proceeds and cash over that period, over, over that five year period of time. And the question is, what is the return on invested capital? Uh, some people refer to this as uh, MOIC or cash on cash multiple. Uh, we'll see what that means at the end of this problem. So let's set out our working here. So basically entry, we begin, uh, let's see. So we bought the company for five times trailing 12 months, which was 20. So we're buying this company for $100 million. And we know the that this is the enterprise value. We also know that was a 60-40 debt to equity ratio split. If you know that enterprise value in simple terms is basically uh, equity plus net debt. I'll just do E plus 
net D, net D for debt. Um, then we know that the 100 million is split. We get $40 million in equity. Uh, plus, I'll just do an E here. And plus 60 was the debt. All right, so that's kind of step one. Now we know that over a five year period of time, this is five years, we have an exit. And we know that we're still using this 5X EBITDA multiple, but this time we know that it's 40. So this time the value is 200 million because that's our uh, five times 40. Final step here is also, however, that we paid down $20 million in debt. So this is important uh, because our debt was originally 60. Let me use a different color here, 60. So this 60 now becomes 40 because we paid down 20 million. And that means this remaining number has to be our equity for us to get to 200 million. So this implies that our equity number actually grew uh, from uh, $40 million in equity to a total of $160 million. Let me just keep it consistent. I'll just do E, show that that's equity. So this is pretty pretty nice here, a great return because what, what this is saying is we actually put up $40 million in real equity, which has been able to grow to $160 million. If we assume that the $20 million in debt, let's say includes any interest that we also have to pay on the loan, what we're saying is that money on invested capital will be a return of, we finished off with $160, $160 million, but we only put in 40, so this is a 4x return. So pretty sweet deal there. That is a great example of the benefits of leverage. This next question comes from Silver Lake, which I believe is a venture capital private equity firm. Uh, the question is pretty simple. Which company would you rather buy? A, a company with $90 million in debt and $10 million in equity, or B, $90 million in equity and $10 million in debt. The first thing that kind of pops up is the this idea of leverage. So company A uh, has a significantly greater amount of leverage than company B, which generally might indicate a less healthy balance sheet because you're purchasing a company with, with a whole lot more liabilities. And that's generally not a very attractive purchase. So you can think about it like you're, what you're really doing is purchasing a whole bunch of debt, which you're going to have to service. So, so the first factor that I would consider here is leverage. And I would just say that lower debt levels typically reduce the financial risk of the company. You're going to have a much smaller burden in terms of interest expense on servicing that debt. So under that factor, company B is company B would be the better choice, $10 million in debt and $90 million in equity. Number two, I would say is financial flexibility. Generally speaking, a higher equity to debt ratio indicates greater financial flexibility for a particular company, financing as needed. And from the perspective of a private equity firm, uh, that is probably more attractive because at the end of the day, somebody is lending you money to acquire another company. Usually that's a bank that is providing you with that debt. It's much easier to convince a bank of the financial health of a company when it has $10 million in, in debt and $90 million in equity rather than the other way around. And number three, I would say is just a more attractive risk profile. Lower debt, generally speaking, reduces the risk of financial distress. Again, just in very basic terms, you're thinking about a company that has a lot less liabilities outstanding. So in, you know, more difficult economic times, it, you know, if the companies can no longer sell whatever it's selling, its products, its services, uh, because people are pulling back spending, it will have a much more difficult time to service that debt. So the risk profile of company B, that which again, uh, has only $10 million in debt versus 90, will be a lot more attractive versus company A. Ultimately, the answer would be uh, company B would be a company that I would rather buy. Of course, all else being equal, uh, but there would have to be some pretty significant pluses of owning company A 
uh, for me to make that trade. There you have it, guys. Those are some of the questions you can expect to get if you are interviewing for those finance roles like investment banking or private equity or investment management. Please let me know how you did down in the comments. Let me know if you got some different answers to the questions than I did. I will be happy to be proven wrong and learn from you guys as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.